Imagine harnessing the ocean's fury within four walls. Welcome to the U.S. Navy's Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin, or MASC. At the push of a button, engineers here can summon the harshest weather conditions imaginable, with wave heights surging up to four feet. You might wonder why we need an indoor ocean when the real one is out there. The answer is precision and control. At MASC, the waves might only reach four feet, but the challenge they pose is monumental. The vessels braving these storms are not full-sized behemoths, but scale models, meticulously crafted miniatures. These models are essential, allowing engineers to test new hull designs and identify potential flaws long before the first metal plate is ever cut. Sometimes the insights gained from these tests can lead directly to major design changes or even a shakeup in the design team. Since its launch in 1962, MASC has played a critical role in shaping the U.S. Navy fleet. Nearly every ship and submarine has been tested here, ensuring they can withstand the ocean's demands. This rigorous validation continued until 2007 when a major renovation transformed the facility. Imagine this, draining all 12 million gallons from the basin to make way for cutting-edge upgrades that continue to push the boundaries of naval engineering. Surprisingly, the water used at MASC isn't salty like the sea. There's a practical reason for this. Fresh water is far less corrosive and simpler to maintain, which significantly extends the life of both the scale models and the facility itself. Yet, the engineers make sure to adjust for the difference in density between salt water and fresh water in their tests, ensuring that the results accurately reflect real ocean conditions. Take a closer look at the rails guiding the testing equipment. They curve subtly. This isn't just an aesthetic choice. It's a functional design that compensates for the Earth's curvature over the expansive test area, boosting the precision of the data collected during each trial. Despite leaps in computer simulation technology, the Navy still relies heavily on these physical models. Computers provide valuable preliminary data, but can't yet fully replicate the complex interactions of fluid dynamics. That's why these scale models are essential. They remain the most reliable method for testing and validating ship designs against the unpredictable forces of the natural world. The continued operation of MASC underscores the Navy's dedication to precision and safety in naval architecture. By merging time-honored techniques with the latest technology, the facility not only fosters innovation, but ensures each new ship design is robust and seaworthy, equipped to tackle the harsh realities of ocean travel. Hydrodynamic testing remains a challenging field, fraught with complexities that even today's most advanced computers struggle to model accurately. This enduring reliance on physical scale models tested in vast water tanks stands as a testament to their unmatched value in predicting how ships will perform under real-world conditions, safeguarding the future of naval engineering for over a century. Welcome to the heart of innovation at the Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin, commonly known as MASC. This facility is a vital piece of the puzzle in naval engineering. In 2007, it marked a significant milestone with a comprehensive renovation that heralded a new era in hydrodynamic testing. The entire facility was temporarily shut down to phase out the old pneumatic wave-making system and set the stage for a major upgrade. The six-year renovation culminated in the installation of an advanced wave-making system equipped with 216 individually controlled electromechanical waveboards. Much like piano keys, these boards don't produce music, but rather, they create precise and varied wave patterns, some of which are so meticulously formed that they mimic conditions not typically found in nature. This state-of-the-art upgrade has vastly improved MASC's capabilities, providing researchers and engineers with the tools to simulate almost any marine environment imaginable. This flexibility is crucial for ensuring that naval vessels are tested under diverse and controlled conditions, bolstering their robustness and readiness for real-world maritime challenges. Why go to such lengths to simulate different oceanic conditions? The world's oceans are vast and varied, with wave patterns shaped by regional geography and weather conditions. It's essential for the U.S. Navy to understand these patterns, as ships are often designed for specific operational theaters. For instance, vessels destined for the turbulent waters of the northern Atlantic must be capable of enduring its unique challenges. 
Thus, the Navy invests heavily in accurately replicating these conditions at mask, enabling the testing of ship resilience under realistic scenarios. To achieve this, the Navy leverages modern technology, gathering extensive data from buoys and satellites on wave energy spectra across different oceans. This information is vital as it allows MASK to expose scale models to the exact sea states their full-sized counterparts would face, ensuring that designs are not only theoretical, but proven under conditions that mirror the actual challenges they will encounter at sea. Imagine testing the limits of naval vessels without ever hitting the open seas. That's exactly what happens at the Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin or MASK. This indoor facility simplifies the testing process enormously, allowing naval architects and engineers to fine-tune designs and iron out flaws well before a ship faces the true challenges of the ocean. This controlled setting is pivotal not only for confirming a vessel's seaworthiness, but also for tailoring its design to thrive in specific maritime conditions. The vital importance of such detailed testing was starkly demonstrated by a maritime mishap on New Year's Day of 2019. The MSC Zoe, a massive container ship, faced a severe storm that led to the loss of 342 containers. This disaster prompted an exhaustive investigation to determine what went wrong. The Maritime Research Institute Netherlands, Marine, took on the task, employing a scale model of the MSC Zoe to simulate and study the storm's impact. The simulation at Marin was revealing. It showed that the MSC Zoe's roll frequency resonated with the storm's wave pattern, creating what's known as roll resonance. This phenomenon caused the ship to tilt at angles up to 16 degrees, far beyond what is generally considered safe, leading to extreme stresses on the containers. The consequences were disastrous. Further investigations uncovered another critical issue. The MSC Zoe had less than 33 feet of underkeel clearance. During the storm, this insufficient clearance meant the ship's hull actually struck the seabed, transmitting shocks and vibrations throughout its structure and further compromising the container's security. This finding underscores the extreme consequences of inadequate testing and preparation, emphasizing the necessity of MASK's advanced wave-generating capabilities to avoid such perils in future naval operations. Why does the Navy test with fresh water instead of salt water? The choice is strategic. Fresh water is less corrosive and easier to maintain, which significantly extends the lifespan of both the testing equipment and the scale models. Although salt water offers different buoyancy due to its density, the Navy makes precise mathematical adjustments during testing to ensure that the results are as accurate as if they were conducted in the ocean. At first glance, the behavior of scale models in water tanks might seem unrealistic, they react to waves more dramatically than their full-size counterparts with exaggerated movements and quick splashes. To someone unfamiliar with the process, these tests might even seem questionable. However, the secret to accurate scale model testing lies in a concept known as the Froude number, named after William Froude, the British engineer who pioneered this approach. His research led to a principle that ensures scale models behave in water just like real ships. For example, if a model is built at a 1-50 Thersier scale, its movements in the tank are not directly comparable to those at sea. By applying the Froude scaling law, engineers adjust the footage speed by a factor, roughly the square root of the scale ratio, which is about 7 in this case. This means the observed behavior of the model in the tank then closely matches what would be expected in real ocean conditions. This meticulous adjustment allows the model to accurately simulate the actual ship's response to various marine challenges, ensuring that the designs are practical, effective, and ready for the harsh realities of the sea. The Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin mask, provides the perfect environment for conducting scaled ship tests. Designed to mimic a vast array of ocean conditions, MASK allows for the meticulous analysis and verification of ship designs before they ever set sail in full-scale production. Just a short distance from MASK, another critical testing facility plays a pivotal role in naval engineering, the David Taylor Model Basin. Home to one of the world's largest towing tanks, this site is indispensable for further hydrodynamic testing, especially focusing on a ship's propulsion and resistance characteristics. What exactly is a towing tank? Picture a long, water-filled basin where naval models undergo rigorous testing. 
Mounted on a carriage that glides along rails, these models face simulated ocean conditions tailored to test their metal. Equipped with advanced sensors and computing systems, the towing tank captures precise data on the hydrodynamic properties and behaviors of the vessels. The shape of a ship's hull is more than just an aesthetic feature. It plays a crucial role in determining the ship's hydrodynamic resistance, which affects its speed and power needs. As the hull slices through water, it encounters varying levels of resistance based on its design. This resistance is critical as it determines how much power a ship requires to maintain different speeds. One key test performed here is the Calm Water Resistance Test, which measures this very resistance. During the test, a model ship is towed at specific speeds, and the forces acting against it are carefully measured. The significance of these tests can't be overstated. Ship performance, particularly speed, is a vital component of naval contracts. For instance, if a newly built aircraft carrier doesn't meet its speed requirements, it might struggle with efficient aircraft launch and recovery, potentially leading to severe operational challenges and contractual issues. The precision in measuring forces within the towing tank is not just about accuracy, it's critical for predicting how a full-size ship will behave in real sea conditions. This precision is vital for shipbuilders and designers, offering a dependable way to ensure that vessels meet their performance specifications before they are fully constructed and deployed. In the realm of naval architecture, precision is everything, especially in a controlled environment like the David Taylor Model Basin. This facility is renowned not only for its vast size, but also for its climate-controlled conditions. Here, even slight variations in water temperature are carefully managed to prevent any impact on test results, ensuring that all data collected are consistent and replicable. The sensitivity of the tests conducted here is underscored by the design of the towing tank itself, which features carriage rails extending 1,886 feet, meticulously engineered to accommodate the Earth's curvature. This specific alignment is crucial as it replicates the natural behavior of water, providing a realistic setting for testing scale models under accurate, real-world conditions. Constructed in the 1930s, the basin stands as a monument to advanced engineering and meticulous design, tailored to meet the exacting demands of naval testing. Furthermore, the concept of draft, the vertical distance between a ship's waterline and its lowest point, is a pivotal factor in naval design, influencing a vessel's buoyancy and stability. At the model basin, resistance tests are conducted at two different drafts, the design draft and the sea trial draft. The design draft represents the ship in a fully loaded state, mirroring its typical operational condition, while the sea trial draft is used during sea trials with a lighter load, offering insights into the ship's performance under varied loading conditions. This dual draft testing is essential for validating a ship's capability to perform across a spectrum of real-world scenarios, ensuring it is ready for whatever the sea may throw its way. The dual draft testing method is fundamental in ensuring a ship's readiness for varied operational conditions. This method involves testing the vessel at two different drafts, the sea trial draft and the design draft. The sea trial draft assesses the ship in a lighter, often unloaded state, which is critical for understanding how performance metrics may change when the vessel isn't fully laden. In contrast, the design draft simulates the ship's fully loaded condition, ensuring it operates as intended when at maximum capacity. This comprehensive approach verifies that a ship can meet its performance specifications in both everyday scenarios and more demanding situations, Another vital test in the evaluation of a ship's capabilities is the self-propulsion test, which is crucial for assessing a ship's autonomous navigation capabilities. During this test, a model ship is initially towed at a consistent speed to measure drag forces. As the testing advances, the ship's own propeller is gradually engaged, taking over the propulsion duties from the towing carriage. This phase continues until the propeller alone can maintain the vessel's movement, effectively cancelling out the measured drag. This critical experiment allows engineers to accurately determine the point at which a ship can autonomously propel itself, providing a direct measurement of its operational efficiency in real-world conditions. In addition to the foundational tests, 
a suite of specialized experiments evaluates other critical aspects of a ship's design and functionality. Open Water Propeller Test This test measures the efficiency and loss characteristics of a ship's propeller in open water conditions, providing essential data to optimize propeller designs. Streamline Tests These tests focus on the interaction between the ship's hull and water, visualizing flow patterns to enhance hydrodynamic performance. Water Tunnel Tests for Cavitation Analysis Cavitation, or the formation of vapor cavities in a liquid, can cause significant damage to a ship's propeller. These tests are crucial for predicting and mitigating wear and tear, thereby maintaining operational integrity and efficiency. Wind Tunnel Tests Especially critical for aircraft carriers, these tests assess airflows and turbulence above the waterline to ensure aircraft can safely take off and land. This comprehensive array of tests conducted on scale models equips ship designers and builders with the confidence that their vessels will perform reliably under real-world conditions. By identifying potential issues and opportunities for design enhancements early in the development process, this rigorous testing regimen ensures that the fully constructed ships are both effective and safe from their very first voyage. Join us in shaping the future of naval engineering and in safeguarding the efficiency and safety of our fleets across the globe. Subscribe now to stay informed about the latest advancements in hydrodynamic testing and naval architecture. Together, let's navigate the challenges of tomorrow's oceans with unmatched precision and innovation. Subscribe today and be part of our journey into the future.